Welcome back to Chocolate Espresso Podcast. I'm your host, Thomas Newer. We're flush or fancy. I ain't, you know, too picky about it. Listen, man, you know what time it is. They know what time it is. They know they don't know what time it is, but they know what time it is. You can't see them. They just work staff. But listen, <laughs> man, it it's that interview time, baby. You know, I love talking to these interview artisans and all that. I said that wrong. I like talking to interview. Why keep messing this up? I like talking to artists because guess what? No matter how many questions I ask, even if it's similar or not, everybody got a different answer. And that's the glorious right. thing about people, man. It doesn't matter who you talk to. Everybody got a difference in opinion. And I love listening to their opinions. And I hope you guys do too. So listen, as you know, if you don't know, now you're about to know. I always say, I can't introduce them any better than they can introduce themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and let the microphone go to them. All right, so we outside with Chocolate Espresso Podcast. Y'all rocking with a John La. How y'all doing? Nice, nice. Hey, I got, I got listen, y'all don't know. Y'all know. They don't know. <laughs> listen, man, hey, I got questions. Talk to me. I got some questions, man. So so what kind of music do you produce? What's your art content? I make Afrobeats. Um, I'm dabbling into Afro swing. Um, I'm trying to be as versatile as possible. What, what's Afro swing? I never heard of that. I would say that's more of a like uh, a more dominated version of Afrobeats done by people in the UK. Um, anybody mm -hmm. could correct me if I'm wrong or enlighten me. But um, ultimately, it's just it's very different when you hear it. It's way different than you hear it. Oh, wait. So that's crazy. So you're saying Afro swing is more like UK based. So is there like a version of that in the US? Um... <laughs> Not that I would know. I'll say there are probably a handful of artists in the U.S. who are dabbling in that subgenre of Afrobeats. Oh, that's crazy. So, like, I don't know. Like, when I think African people in the U.K., I think, like, drill music. So, like, is it, any, yeah. like, is it similar to that? Or? Yeah, I'll say it is similar because it has, some, it has a lot to do with the way they enunciate their words and um, they use their uh, phonetics when they rhyme and... Um, you know, when they come with their lyrics. So mm -hmm. I guess that just contributes to them. You know, it was, I'm assuming the genre probably, the subgenre probably came to be from a group of people just trying it out there. And then it just came to be what it was based off of what their sound is over there. Oh, that's really interesting. So do you feel like Afrobeats in the UK is better than the Afrobeats in Africa? No way. <laughs> no way. What you mean, man? No you gotta, so you gotta, you gotta expand on that. All right. So it's like saying you better than a blueprint. There's no way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I like personally that. speaking, big respect to Fela Nikolaku Kuti. He's the one who started Afro Beat. Um, that developed a long time. You know, with the course of time, that developed into what it is today to be Afro Beats. So you have people like Burner, Wizkid. Um, David O, Olamide, you know, people just doing their own thing and just leaving their own imprint on it, inspiring mm -hmm. different people. I think Berna said he came, Berna came up with his own subgenre one time. He came mm -hmm. up, he called it Afrofusion, for an example. So, so speaking of Berna though, like, yeah. word on the street is he said Afrobeats ain't got no substance though. Come on, I see that face you make. It sounds like you heard it. It's what yeah, you're talking did. about, man. Yeah, what, what's your feelings on that? Personally speaking, um, I don't really, I don't really feel no ways about that. Honestly, um, not that I'm trying to discredit his experience or his point of view, but that's just not how I see it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, you know, when it comes to music, people hear it differently. Okay, hey, you know what? This, this leads me to another question, though, because mm -hmm. it's more of a statement than anything else, but it is more, it's stated in a form of question. I'm a strong believer. It's kind of like, you know how people say, like, oh, that that dude sound like he a SoundCloud rapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, some people just could have left that on draft. Like, oh, my, my, my. <laughs> how you feel about that? Like, you feel like art's art and everybody has a chance? Or some people be like, are you, you listen to some people and be like, why are they still doing this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, personally speaking, I'm not gonna lie, uh, that's crazy you say that because when I first started this journey, that's how I felt about my sound. Mm. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my biggest fears was like, you know, people receiving my sound and just being like, yo, turn that shit off. Like, who's this skip next, you know? Yeah. Um, and I've always been a creative for a long time, so I understand what it means to have your, have your, how do I want to put this? 
how you I, I understand how it feels to have your baby or like have your project really received like purely for its art mm -hmm. but then have it like overlooked because it's not the trend you know what i'm saying so, got you yeah uh i do to answer your question you know growing up obviously like we were kids out here you know when we hear stuff we just be like yo who is that like nah skip <laughs> like, you know mm -hmm. but a long time like you realize that everybody's coming f with their own creativity from different places so do you feel like when you were younger and you like have you always listened to afro beats yeah yeah so yeah. when you were younger do you feel like afro beats back then is more like successful than it is today no way so what's the, what's the difference like what's the difference in the sound <laughs> the difference in the sound is social media Ooh, interest so you feel like social media for you at least helped Nah, it hasn't helped me yet. I'm not going to lie, but it will. Um, to my point, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I remember back in Queens when my sisters came back with a couple CDs. They came back with Two-Face. They came back with Style Plus, and I forgot the other one. Um, but the point being, those people, like, just think about how music was even distributed back then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just on a different caliber now. Think about, like, even being compared to peers that you didn't even know were your peers, you know, because they're in another country. Um, and you you were speaking about drill earlier. Think about how drill is done in France. Drill is done in mm -hmm. London. How drill is done in um, Africa now, for an example. That's a whole nother content on its own. Drill is even being done in Asian countries too, as well, too. I've seen that. So exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's traveling, it's traveling, it's traveling. And when you see somebody else set the bar, from you know a third world country or a second world country or another first world country it makes in my opinion i feel like it makes a lot of artists want to buckle up i see it as like when you see somebody like burner selling out stadiums but then you know you're just globally known or it's my bad you're not even globally known you're just known statewide across the u.s when you see somebody like burner selling out stadiums in different countries but you as an American artist and whatever genre, you're just known arena wide in the US. Mm -hmm. That's a different caliber, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's like a C list versus A list. Exactly. You know? yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But then you really see it and um and I feel like social media I don't wanna say it force I just I, I guess I wanna say it forces a healthy competition when you see somebody um, and they don't have to be in the same genre as you. You just see somebody just just as more vocally correct as you, you mm -hmm. know, or lyrically correct as you. Like, you know, this person just crazy. Like, his wordplay is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, like, what's that going to make you want to do? You just going to want to stay basic or stay the same? In right. my eyes, when I see something like that, I'd be like, damn, like, I'm inspired. Like, let's get back to the lab. Let's get to work. <laughs> oh, bro. So, so. Touching, you know, touching a little bit more on being expired, like with some of your music and Afro beats, do you feel like most of your inspiration comes from where? Is it mainly just listening to other Afro beats? Is it walking around a park? You know, like <laughs> where's your inspiration, most of your inspiration derived from? Uh, I'll be real. It comes from my roots. But I feel like when it comes to applying my inspiration into music or into, into my creativity, um, I want to word this correctly. My inspiration comes from my roots, but it's conditioned by my experiences. Mm. So, like, I was born in the U.S., obviously. Um, parents are from Nigeria. Uh, growing up in New York, in my eyes, the biggest music capital in the world. I don't care what anybody <laughs> tells me. <laughs> and um, just being surrounded by different forms of art, just specifically in just music, just from different cultures. Like I'm talking about Puerto Ricans, I'm talking about my Dominicans, I'm talking about my Haitians, you know, my Colombians, Nigerians, you know, everybody. And you just see different stuff and then even with how people are sampling today, you can see how they just they just manipulate that into their music. A lot of uh people, a lot of Haitian a lot of drill rappers are actually Jamaican and Haitian in New York, for example. They incorporate a lot of their words like mata into their, you know, into mm -hmm. their music. That's just an example. So I'll say like just being growing up and seeing different things, it shapes how I want to do music. But my roots are still the same. Do you feel like when you first started doing music, 
and you like did you tell your parents about it and your family and friends not so why not like were you afraid of <laughs> like you didn't think they were gonna be okay with it or actually my mom was like one of the last people i told her i did music <laughs> wow <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah she was one of the last people i told um Simply because, like, I just wanted to be sure, like, this was, like, she wasn't just going to hear some trash, some trash shit. Mm. Um, I have a cousin who is doing very, very well in music right now, and she's one of my motivations. Um, but not only is she setting a bar for me, you know, daily, um, I have other colleagues and um, friends and associates who've also set the bar pretty fucking high, I can't lie. I go as much as to name, but, you know, <laughs> they know I got love for them everywhere. Yeah. I've met a lot of artists who, you know, when I ask them, do you have, do you have a support system? You mm -hmm. know, friends that can say, hey, I can I can take this up. Or family that be like, hey, you know what? I got you, you know, or I'll buy your ticket and stuff like that. Do you feel like you have a pretty solid support system? Albeit, you know, if you didn't have it then, mm -hmm. do you think you have it now? Or That's a tough one. Personally speaking, I'm gonna keep it a buck. Um, there's a lot of love. I get a lot of love from my community. Um, obviously based out here in Minnesota, from my roots in New York, um, family back in Nigeria and London, uh, I get a lot of love from my community. In terms of support, I don't know. We have different definitions of support, mm. but the support that I am getting, I am like most eternally grateful for everybody, for sure. That's what's up. You know. When when people sometimes talk a little bit about like, you know, I I was on tour, you know, I got a family, mm. you know, like I hate when I'm gone for so long. I hate mm. when I see the look on my my spouse's face when I have to say, hey, I'm gonna be gone for you know a month or a week or two. You know, have you been on tour yet? Or I haven't been on my own tour yet, but I was fortunate enough to be on tour with Alicia Keys and Libyanka. Um, that was major. Man. One of the G's put me on with that, so big love to him. Was it a, a, a phenomenal experience, too? It was. It was. What, I, can you I talk about lesson. some of the things you learned on that, too? Ooh. Um, I reflected on this a while ago, so it's just going to take a little bit. <laughs> just, uh, <clears throat> the tour concluded back in uh, July for us, I think. So that's pretty much a minute ago. But in the moment, I know I learned the importance of professionalism. Like... Alicia, Alicia and Libyanka, like, they set the bar. Can't lie. Mm. Um, I learned the importance of um, repetition, consistency, practice. Like, professionals do not play about their craft. They do mm. not play about their time <laughs> to rehearse. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. They don't. Um, everything got to be spot on every show. Every show. Um, I think we did about 15 cities. Um... Was it very tiring? Did you feel like you oh, yeah. were wiped out when you got back? Uh, personally <laughs> speaking, this was that was my first tour or mm -hmm. experience on tour. And um, I wasn't even contributing to a whole lot. I can't lie, but I was helping in the way that I could. Mm -hmm. But it was challenging. I've never seen nothing like that before. It was challenging. It was challenging. You got to give respect to artists because you don't really know what they go through. Going state to state different days mm -hmm. back to back to back to back for real like you don't know what they're going through so i mean i i ask every artist this too you know but how do you feel your mental health is in this game especially after that tour because again that that could be extremely stressful for a lot of people and a lot of people don't take enough time to like really reflect on themselves and keep themselves healthy in that kind of way that's real um personally speaking i think that my mental health currently right now is in God's hands. <laughs> <laughs> Can't lie, it's really in God's hands. <laughs> but uh, from that tour, I just had to do a lot of reflecting on myself. There's a lot of shit that I had to change. Um, I had to dig deep. I had to pour back into myself too. It's important mm -hmm. um, in this generation, in this time that we're in right now, that as much as you're pouring into others, you're pouring into yourself. You can't mm -hmm. pour out an empty cup. So for my niggas out there, like y'all got to take care of y'all mental health. Yeah, it's a hard one, man. Especially when people, 
like I said, I mean, like even listening to some of the lyrics and people really talking about their lives and like some of the things that happen to their family members and having to experience it, let alone like you seeing like your family member, you know, getting shot or, you know, losing somebody or, you know, even if it's like, oh, I thought this person was there and they weren't and they still did what they did, you know, Mm -hmm. just out of retaliation. That's tough. You know, it's, it's a really hard, there's a lot of trauma in some music, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people share it. And I don't think a lot of people recognize that for what it is, which is a scary, scary thought. So do you feel like some of these things have made its way into Afro beats too? Like I hear a lot more like hip hop coming in the Afro beats and kind of invading that space. Do you think it belongs? Yes, I think it does. I think there's space, there's space for, I think there's space for everything. Um, it just depends on how you execute it at the end of the day. In terms of like, you know, if there's, uh, if there should be more collaborations with like, you know, other genres, why not? Like if it's that, di- if it's delivered correctly and it's digested well, like is it not, it's, to me, it's a job well done. So I can't knock anything, but I think that if we stay stagnant, <laughs> there wouldn't be no progress either. Mm. So do you feel like you would sign with a label? A label. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like my freedom. I'm a, I can't lie. I like my freedom. Don't get me wrong. Like A, a label will, will sound valid, but I got my own opinion on how I want to go about that. And that's also like, you know, we're learning around for like my peers in music, like actual colleagues, like my actual guys, my niggas in music who are doing it for real. So like, Seeing what they go through, seeing like you know the roller coasters they had to deal with, mm-hmm. trying to learn from it, you know, because it it really save you time, you know, if you read your contract type shit. That's yeah, tough. <laughs> so, I uh, you ever heard of the was it the twenty seven rule? What's that? Where the record labels, if you stop making them as much money, mm-hmm. you're they can make more if you're dead. Really? Yeah. Oh, po- a lot of years? yeah, a lot of uh, rock artisans died around that age. Mm. And a lot of people believe it's because the record label kills them off. Mm. And when you look at how much money that label starts to get when they're no longer alive, it's crazy. It's like double, triple, and quadruple what they were making That's after ridiculous. the fact. You know, so it's like, That's ridiculous. you know, do you feel like that could be ever a concern in this in, in this industry, at least for you? Yeah, um, I definitely do think that. I don't think um, nobody is above anything, mm. right? <laughs> And um, I want to say it's just all about discernment at the end of the day. Like, we just got to be, we got to be really in tune with everything we're doing. Like, think about the next 10 moves. Yeah. Otherwise, like, you know, there's really no way to really predict what's really about to happen to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just say you're not about to take risk out of fear what could be or what couldn't. So, Can you describe what your ideal work environment might be? Hmm. Like, in terms of me getting work done, like, for music? hmm Okay. I say... <laughs> my guys are going to clown me for this one, but, like, I need a pitch black room. <laughs> I need my room black. Like, dark. It's not that I'm trying to be in a dark place, but just, like, <laughs> I don't want to see no other distractions at that moment, just my computer screen or just my engineer looking at the um, computer screen. Uh... You got a little bit of light, but none too much. <laughs> um, I need them, whatever beat we listening to, I need it blasting. I need it blasting hard. Like, you know, if I'm off the lick, that's a special, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, I'd say that's my ideal environment. You know, we got that mm-hmm. Zion in here too, like that's valid. But my. What does Afro beats mean to you? That's crazy. I never actually thought about that. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Um, I'll say it's a represent. It's a representation of um, my culture. It's a representation of my culture of um, how we hear music and how we want to deliver it. Um, that's really all I can say. <laughs> that's really all I can say because um, I hear R and B just the same way everybody else hears R and B, but because I speak another dialect. You know, I hear music in my dialect the same way they hear it, too, you know? So. Do you feel like your music's starting to sound the same like everybody else's? 
Uh, nah, I don't think so. Um, it's funny you asked that question because I was just talking to one of my guys and he was, um, who heard another track that I just worked on recently. And he was just telling me how he feels like I'm actually just finally solidifying my sound by now. So I don't think so. Okay. okay. I don't think so. Can you talk a little bit about the new single you got coming out? I think it's called Castaway. Oh, yeah. Nah, it's already out. It's oh. already out. We, on the, we on to the next one soon. I hope y'all ready. <laughs> Shit. What's it about? Uh, Castaway. <clears throat> so, or the new one. The new one. one. Oh, the new one. new one. Yeah. All right. So, the new one, this one is about, you know, my upbringing. Um, it's about growing up in the projects of Ocean Village in Queens, New York. It's about, you know, praying for better days. It's about seeing better days, really. It's about, like, not being scared of what tomorrow might bring because, you know, mm -hmm. you're just about to just go hard. And, you know, I say being from two different worlds, you know, being Nigerian and uh, American, I feel like it's important we, it's important those of us who identify as this to not feel like we have to pick sides, in my opinion. That's just us. Mm. Do you keep up with some of the technology nowadays? Like what? Like, let's talk a little bit about AI, mm. artificial intelligence. Now, I, I love AI. All right, listen, <laughs> if you're seeing this, future overlords, all right, I love you guys. Don't don't make me the rest of them. Give me a nice <laughs> little house near a lake. Uh, you know, they got technology today. It's only going to get better or worse, depending on who you ask. Mm -hmm. You know, you ever heard of, like, the, the artificial Drake? So on Twitter, was it Twitter? Somewhere, I think it was either Twitter, Instagram, or something, but they had uh, AI came up with a whole song. It oh, synthesized yeah, the yeah, music, yeah. and in a lot of people's opinion, it was better than Drake, <laughs> you know? Like, are you afraid of, like, how this is going to invade your space? You're not too concerned with it? Like, what's your thoughts on that? Personally speaking, I don't think I'm too concerned on that. Um, and that's just based off the fact that, like, I've never really been a like tech crazy type nigga like you know like I like the new latest forms of technology don't get me wrong but like in terms of I don't know manipulating AI trying to make music for myself or trying to get lyrics off AI that's not my speed for real like but it does sound it does sound far-fetched I can't lie like personally speaking I also have that doesn't mean I've never ever used an AI before like you know mm -hmm. I've had an AI write a cover letter for me before. <laughs> you, know, right? you know, so shit like that. But like to use it to make something that's intentional that I want to really like rep. Uh, AI can never talk about my experiences for an example. Yeah, it's just general knowledge that's just, you know, fast mm -hmm. or whatever. Do you feel like as as time goes on and this industry expands more to other countries and other cultures? Um, is it, in your opinion, like I can see it being a little concerning in mm. my, for me personally, like it's in the name, it's Afrobeats, right? <laughs> it's Africa, you know, it's, it's in my, like, I can see that you know, at least people who are from it, but when you have other cultures using it, it kind of changes what the meaning of that genre could be. You see, you, you kind of feeling me? You understand what nah, I'm saying? Repeat that one more time. Please. So like, like when I hear the, like hip hop, I, I can use yeah. hip hop as another example, right? Mm-hmm. American, you know, like you mm -hmm. have the stories of black people and what they were going through, Facts. you know, and it's, it's, that's what hip hop is Facts. right now. You have other countries who have it and then you have their cultures that impact it. So now you have, let's say Japanese people who can rap, mm -hmm. you know, it's not the same as a black person in, I don't know, Bronx who had Facts. gone through, you know, so much and talking about it. Mm -hmm. So when you think about Afro beats, it's kind of like when you have someone from China coming up with a beat you know, and doing their own thing on it, mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's taken away from what Afrobeats are. Mm -hmm. I can see it. I see it that way. That's you know, right. do you kind of disagree, agree? Thoughts? Uh, before I answer that question, mm -hmm. it kind of makes me think about, like, you know, the little controversy over Drake. Like, you know, he'd be culturally appropriated and shit like mm -hmm. that. Is that what you're referring to type shit? A little bit. Okay. I, I personally, I don't see it that way. Okay. I just see it as like... You know, it can the genre starts to shift a little mm. bit when too many people get their hands in the pot. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, did you wash your hands? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> facts. All right. Um, 
I don't think um I think that you could have a point. Um and that's why I say it depends on how it's executed, it depends on how it's really done. And you could have an idea, but like if you're if your goal okay, it depends on what your goal is. I right, how about that? Like if my goal is to build a house that resembled the type of homes in Japan, for an example, I would most likely have to hire Japanese architectures, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so in the idea of music, like I need like, you know, a, I want to say an African, an African uh, producer, you know, mm-hmm. to an extent, you know, I need that beat to be at least like that. And then let me see if I could, you know, use wherever I'm from, whether I'm from Brazil or Portugal, like, you know, mm-hmm. see if I could put my Portuguese rhymes on this, you know, that's how I would say it would be the ideal ballpark for me. But, you know, everybody got different ways of going about it. Now, for me to judge it, I don't know. I leave that to everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. the consumers listening to that. We give power to whatever we listen to. So Thank shut you. that shit down, you know, if you're not jacking it for real. It's kind of like what they say, you know, cast your vote by the listen. Oh, you know, saying you don't like this company, stop spending your dollars there. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, so, yeah. I never listen. Like, I'm not listening to songs that I feel like is trash over and over again. That doesn't mm-hmm. make sense to me, you know. I agree. Like I said, I I just I see the market in so many ways and new dramas popping up from different cultures. And mm. I'm just like, this is taken away from the origin of it, you know, mm. and, and I hate to see because, uh, you know, now more than ever, we're more globally connected. Yeah. You know, you can make a phone call and in <laughs> seconds you're across the world speaking to somebody, you know, and it, mm-hmm. you know it's that quick. You and know, that's so, what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. That's the difference between um, Afrobeats right now and 10 years ago. Mm. That, that's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. Do you feel like some of your art helps you in other areas of your life too? Uh, I say music in general was a different way to like relieve (laughs) tension or like stress. Um, I originally started like my creativity with photography and modeling and shit like that. Um, So dabbling in this was a little bit of foreign territory, but not too foreign based off of my background. But um, I never thought I'd get into this, but it really has been a blessing in a way because I just enjoy it. I really do enjoy it. Do you see yourself doing this in five years? Music in five years? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. No doubt. Um, you know, I don't see myself doing music for like, you know, 40, 30 years, though, like shit like that. You know, we got a mogul mindset for this, but at the end of the day, I do see myself doing this for a while. Like, this is genuinely something I enjoy doing. If I stop making music, I promise you, like, I'm in tune in the, in the back end for something else that has to do with music. So do you feel like age plays a role into this? Hell yeah. In um, what ways? For an example, I think about a lot of the artists that our parents, you know, used to listen to, like, Babyface, right? For an example. Not Babyface, right? Baby face, actual baby face, my phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> actual baby face. <laughs> baby face, you know, um, TLC, them, you know, all of them. Like, when they go on tours now, they doing their greatest hits. You know what I'm saying? Like, once in a while, we'll see artists, like, artists who are out the game, who are retired, you know, come out with another album just for, like, their day one fans and shit like that. So, yeah, that's cool and all, but that's not, it's not a, it's not, I feel like the thrill dies off at a certain age. You know, everybody knows that. Do you, oh, do you think like as time goes on and, and things are starting to shift, you know, do you think it's getting harder to kind of reach out to a lot of children to listen to this kind of music? Or is that not like the goal? Like if you can't reach the youngest, Afrobeats? yeah. Cause like in the younger generation, they going to be the ones making you the most, right? Mm-hmm. So do you feel like it's kind of hard marketing to a certain generation? You know what? <laughs> That's a crazy question because <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember what year recently I was feeling like this. That And the feeling that I was feeling was more so around like a lot. Of, I felt like a lot of younger kids weren't listening to Afrobeats like that no more. Or maybe that's what it was like in Minnesota. I don't know. But um, it kind of looked like I was wrong. Like. 
I don't know. I, I be seeing some, you know, I, sometimes I watch other people's like stories that I, you know, people that you don't normally watch their stories, you just watch. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I've just been seeing bizarre stuff. Like, not that, uh, I don't know. I want to work this <laughs> <laughs> My fault, man. Like, yeah. uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, um, to my surprise, I've seen a lot of younger kids that like, listen to, or post music. You know how you could post music on IG or Facebook and shit like that. You see like people my cousin's age, you know, listen my little cousin's age listening to shit that we used to listen to like four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. Which would be old to them, you know, at this age now mm -hmm. currently. And it's like, oh, like I would have never thought you would have found WizKids old, you know, superstar album interesting or like you know you would have liked it. But they like shit like that. Um and I guess in a way that kind of just answered the question you just asked to me that nah i think as long as we continue to evolve as artists you know like the genre will never die like it probably fluctuate because you know um you see I, I don't know i've been hearing this i don't know if this is the most correct medium to be saying this in but like, i've been hearing that rap is dying like hip-hop is dying mm. you know so like I'm not really a rapper, so I can't really speak on to that. But so, why do you think hip hop and rap is dying this year? This year, um, I guess I think some people judge that based off of how many successful albums drop within a year, you know, or within a you know a three year span. Uh, I was <laughs> I was seeing Lil Baby Slander after he dropped his two songs, which I thought were fire, though, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, some people are saying that it sounds like the same old baby, for an example. And it could yeah. be that, just not you know the. Some people see it as just they just constrained to their to their ways. Like they just you can't teach an old dog new tricks type shit. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I keep saying like if you're not evolving, people are gonna get bored. So do you feel like mumble rap is still rap? Shit, people ain't <laughs> mumbling no more. <laughs> <laughs> like, like think about it, like them little pump, them little pump them. Um, even Uzi, like, Uzi actually, like, is trying a lot. Like, but, like he, well, I'm saying trying. Uzi is a great artist. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I say, like, when he first started into that mumble rap type of genre, like, what set him apart was just, you know, him being himself and just finding his sound and the way to use his lyricism and his music. That's what's up, man. I, I, I listen to so many different genres. Like, I just like music. Mm. You know, whatever works for me in the moment, I go for it. And... I've definitely over the years noticed like there's been a lot of shifts like hip hop has a lot more pop mm -hmm. involved in it. Uh, Afro beats like I remember listening to some older ones where it was like very rooted like very like is this Afro beats or is this just like classic African music? <laughs> you know, I don't know how to describe it because, you know, I'm from America. We listen to a lot of American like music and when i think of certain like ethnic groups and the music that they can perform or produce it's very unique to that area you know so now i hear beats and it's like our afro beats and it's like okay there's been a huge shift in it you know mm -hmm. like in my opinion when i hear like burma boy or like whiz kid like a lot of the beats to me sound the same hmm. you know like Hmm. It, it's it, I'm, I'm throwing based you on the fire. Of, yeah, based off <laughs> of what though? Like, where you coming from with this one? Like, this this is this is an American kid, you know, talking about just music. Like, like okay, like in hip hop, right? Like, I can almost say the same thing. A lot mm -hmm. of the music sounds the same, right? The beat, the tone, how it's produced, mm -hmm. all that. And when I hear Afro beats today, it's like a lot of it to me sounds extremely similar. Like, I, you can tell, like, okay, this is different, mm -hmm. but. To me, it sounds the same. Like they people are copying each other, and it might be because this is what's selling. This sold for Burma, so maybe it's gonna sell for Wizkid. Maybe it'll sell for you know I can't think of anybody else. <laughs> but you know, like I feel like maybe maybe I'm just full of it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, <clears throat> I never really. I try not to really knock nobody's opinion about nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I respect that. So like, but my point of view, uh, I say. I get where you coming from that you kind of feel like people just hop on trends, you know? Mm -hmm. For an example, there's that I'm a, I'm a piano trend going on right now. Have you heard of that genre? Mm -hmm. So as, I'm pretty sure, and people could correct me if I'm wrong still, like I'm pretty sure it originated in South Africa. 
And, um, you know, Nigerians got into it. Um, Ghanaians got into it. Everybody in Africa got into <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? And it's just been shooting from there. With that example, right? For an example, Nigerians hopping on that wave of I'm a piano. One could say they were copying the trend. Right? Mm -hmm. So, now, I want to say that it really falls back on execution too. <laughs> no, for real. Like it really does fall back on execution too. Because if it, if there was a poor job being done, you know, yeah, and then they're gonna ask you to sit down. You know what I'm saying? Take several mm -hmm. seats. But they clearly <laughs> did it well, you know. And you know, anybody, most of the I'm a piano, most of the people that do I'm a piano nowadays, like outside of South Africa, like I can't say I've really heard a bad, bad, terrible song before. Can't lie, because the beat usually carries the song, mm -hmm. and that itself is what's similar across all tracks that sound like Ama Piano. Even if people aren't even trying to sound like Ama Piano, but even before Ama Piano, I think was the vibe called Soweto, like Soweto, like that type of vibe. So you grab, yeah, like they kind of had a sound like that maybe like ten years ago, for an example. Bro, shit. So, do you have any current art trends that are driving some of your work? Um. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a I'm a piano warrior. I'm not <laughs> one of them. <laughs> I'm not one of them, but that's a vibe for me, like that I wanna definitely dive into. But it isn't really what's pushing my vibe right now. I say like Afro Soul, Afro Adura, like that's really like a sub sub genre that I'm into. And that vibe is basically based off of like people in Nigeria, you know, in the trenches, in the, you know, in the slums, just singing about, like, better days and, you know, mm -hmm. a better hustle every day just to the grind. Those are the type of songs that I damn near listen to every single day, like, aside from rap, like, you know, and I listen to it. I'm very, very rap-influenced, you know, R&B-influenced. But I say those type of music, like, is really what get my day going. Any time of the day, ask, ask my niggas. Any time of the fucking day, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., I'm listening to niggas like Shady Vibes, um, T.I. Blaze, Barry J., Nice. Like, I can name so many. Like, we'll be here forever. Boy, too. Can you name a little bit or talk a little bit about some of your trial and errors mm. over the years? Over the years? Mm -hmm. <sighs> I say... I'm not even gonna lie, I haven't really been too focused on errors this year. It's been a crazy year, don't get me wrong. It's been a roller coaster. Um, but <laughs> I haven't been dwelling on errors this year at all. And it's just been keeping me going because I'm like focused on a goal for it. Like, I, I made this mistake. Like, one thing I, okay, so yeah, you just made me, <laughs> talking about it really made me remember one. I say, Within the season of not trying to focus on er of not trying to be focused on errors, I have learned to not skip over any lesson just because I want to get back to work. Mm. Because you'll find yourself back at that lesson again, and God has humbled me <laughs> too many fucking times. You know, shit. Now that we talk, you got me remembering errors now. <laughs> like, I mean, like, okay, so. Another error I, I probably made was like, you know, there were some situations I could have cut myself out of. Like, <clears throat> and it's not even on some like crazy shit. It's just more so like, you know how like you can't, you put yourself in an atmosphere to fuck up or like get disrespected. Like, you know, you shouldn't, have, like if I would have stayed my ass in the crib, like a shit will never happen to me type shit. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a couple of moments I'd be like, fuck, bro. Like, what am I, <laughs> like, why am I here right now? <laughs> and then I know why I'm here. Like, you know, I took the risk. So I've been learning from those. Um, I've been praying for a lot. I've been praying for a lot more discernment for my steps. So I like to ask uh, one of my another. I got like five, six favorite questions I like to ask everybody because mm -hmm. it's always different answers, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, probably don't need it. But mm -hmm. if you had $500 right now, mm -hmm. what would you do with it? $500 right now. Mm -hmm. I'm buying a beat. That's it? <laughs> yeah, straight up. <laughs> so there's a difference in a $100 beat, $500 beat, $20 beat? I was, in a way, yeah, but it's also more so like, it's also more so like, this is a diff. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not gonna say what I was about to say. <laughs> I just, I, thank God I caught myself. <laughs> Real shit. Look, I say yeah. Plain words, yeah. That's a huge difference. But some beats are priceless. Some beats you can't put a price on. Like if a producer just fucks with you and you just don't ever gotta pay, and he's just gonna be like, "All right, bro, it's up in the air. Just take it." Wow. Do you feel like a lot of uh, producers don't have a really good relationship with their artists? Um, shit, the producers I'm working with got a good relationship with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about these other niggas, but shit, I try my best not to really, like, you know, burn any of these bridges. Like, it's crazy because I'd be ready to burn these bridges on my mama. Mm. So when you have, like, the people around you and you, you see them and you make really good, solid connections and stuff like that, like, how do you feel, like, in this industry especially in Afrobeats, like, how do you build more relationships with those around you? Like, how do you connect with your peers? Um, that's a tough one for me. I'm not going to lie because... <sighs> Growing up in New York, like, you just know that people... There needs to be a mutual will to collaborate and work together. This is just how I feel, like, growing up in that city. Like, you just, that's one of the unspoken lessons that you just learn. Like, you could just get that energy from somebody who's just really just not trying to be on your timing. Mm -hmm. And then you just find yourself dick riding for no reason. So, to avoid that, like, I personally think that you kind of got to find a, a good balance between reaching out and learning to, like, stay in your lane. And just, like, because I feel like people want to work with somebody that's good regardless. Point blank simple. Mm -hmm. Good people, people who suck at whatever um, category we're talking about, like even the people that are the best as well, you know what I'm saying? They want to work with the best no matter what. The best want to work with the best and even the worst want to work with the best to get better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by staying in your lane. It's not more, it has nothing to do with ego. It has nothing to do with like pride or anything like that. It's just like, you know, a couple, you know, like maybe um, two minutes ago we was talking about something about, um, you know, Staying in your lane and avoiding disrespect, yeah, that'd be it. Because, you know, stay in your lane, work on your craft, and then, shit, you never know who might reach out. But if you spend your time trying to just collaborate with everybody, bro, I'm not really, that's not really me. I do want to collaborate with as much people as possible, but, like, I'm not holding my breath waiting, God forbid. Do you feel like some artists... And Af are coming to Afrobeats and including on it, like some hip hop artisans are going on doing Afrobeats and stuff like that. Like Drake did an Afrobeat a couple of albums ago, mm -hmm. and apparently people didn't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, so stuff like that, like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, here's a real life example for me. All right. When um, Burner Boy did a song with 21, I don't know if you heard it, mm -hmm. Sitting on Top of the World. Uh, at first, I didn't like that song. It grew on me, though. And it turned out to be one of my favorite songs on a, on his album. So I say sometimes, <laughs> the music is funny sometimes. Like, sometimes it takes five listens, three listens, two listens, and you finally get to hear, like, oh, shit, like, yo, nah, this nigga really talking. Like, this shit really flowing on. It's not as bad as I thought it was. And a lot of music grows on me, grow on me like that. But when I know I don't like something off rip, like I can never listen to it again, I won't listen to it again, personally speaking. So to answer your question, I want to say it depends again. Like I know I've been saying that all day, but yeah, execution matters. And you know, how we perceive execution is different. You know what I'm saying? Like me filling this shit up to the brim right now, like that probably is a job well done to you, but that's probably like a decent job to him. Mm, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So in, in, Speaking a little bit more about like collaboration and artisans, like, do you feel like you could ever work with somebody who's like, like if they came to you and were like, listen, I'm, I'm starting, I kind of want to do this, you know, let me show you some of my music. And you're like, it's average at best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. do you feel like it's like people have to come to you with a certain level of, you know, Stand like, there's, is there a standard for someone you would expect to collab with, or is it like I'm willing to collab with whomever as long as <clears throat> you know we can come up with something neutral, Mu mutual? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Oh yeah, uh, I think that 
right i think it's just it falls down to the type of person you want to be in this music game um i do believe that when we all get to a certain levels uh, level in our career like you know shit gets different you know what i'm saying you can't just accept every invitation to collaborate or you know or every invitation to go outside you know what i'm saying shit changes a lot and a lot of times you kind of have to move like that first before you get that type of treatment too i've seen that work for some people and i've i've seen it not work for some people so i want to say for me i'm down to work with everybody that i believe that we could make good music together with and yeah if that, well, however that makes make sense, yeah, <laughs> however that makes that, sense, like perfect sense. If I really feel like me, and you about to make some shit fire. Like I'm, head, I'm locked in. If I feel like it's about to be basic or it's just not, I'm not really feeling it. Like I will still give it my full effort because in a way, it's still, it's practice for me. Real shit, like it's really just practice for me. Okay, and in the grand scheme of like where you see yourself in and. 20 years mm. right especially in the music game like if you weren't doing music what would you be doing <laughs> like you can't do anything related to music mm -hmm. what else like what else could you be doing um you know how i said like i wasn't really a tech tech type I mean, tech nigga type shit like that mm -hmm. i meant like with like i don't know following the new up-to-date technology and shit like that but in a way, like, I work, I kind of work in tech, like, you know, I'm in tech, shit like that, school for that shit. So, I say, like, I'll be working in tech. <laughs> I'll be working in tech. Um, I went to school for fucking mental health. <laughs> Not really mental health, I'm captain. <laughs> I went to school for psychology. Um, mental health is a really, really big, important uh, sector for me. And I see myself really revolving around that. If I wasn't in music, even regardless of me being in music, like down the line, I still see myself giving back to that sector. So, you know, doing different stuff, like, you know, obviously working in my profession, dabbling in real estate, doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> where could people find your music? Like, where you drop it at? My shit everywhere, man. My shit on Tidal, my shit on Apple, Spotify, um, Teaser, I think, YouTube, uh, shit, Google me. Mm. How do you they uh what's your hand like you spell your handle and everything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So my Instagram handle is P A B L O period P A P I I I. So that's Pablo Poppy. And my artist name again is at John Lott. And for the people that don't know, that basically just means the biggest. Awesome. Do you have any uh, final questions or, or sayings, words you want to share? Say, I don't know, statements. I'm tripping. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no final statements, but I just tell everybody that's in here, out here in Minneapolis. Y'all come over here. Y'all come stop by. Come hang out with these dudes. Cool cats for real. Listen, man, look, because you know what it is. It's the end of the video. All right. But the other day, right, I was in Minneapolis and it's like December right now, but for some reason, man, it's like 50 degrees outside. Like, oh, this bro. ain't this ain't winter. This is spring, <laughs> man. This is like late fall, not even. Like, this ain't Minnesota, man. It was really sunny out, right? Mm -hmm. It was some real sunshine. Grass growing. Grains are green. It was crazy. And I was like, babe, you know what we should do? She was like, what? We should, like, we should go to New York. <laughs> what, your house? Y'all didn't know she's from New Jersey, but New Jersey's New York anyway, man. She hates when I say that, but let's just be real. The same people, they, they know, don't even start. Chill, so we chill, ended, chill. so we so 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 we ended up going to New York, right? And on the way there, I pointed out a sign. It said like. She was like, "What's that?" I was like, "I don't know. We gotta Google what like is." And then when we Google like and put it in and hit the enter button, it said and subscribe. So mm. listen, y'all, <laughs> if you like, share, and subscribe, we can go places. You feel me? Oh, bro. Like that's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You ain't gotta ring the bell or nothing like that. But if you like, share, and subscribe, I can keep pushing out more and more content, and I love it. I know you guys love me. And, uh, you know, the more likes, share, and subscribes you do, maybe I can go to Paris. Oh, bro, we out. And if we go to Paris, I can really start linking up with some people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, listen, we out. All right. <laughs>